Here we go guys, these are all of the, I guess, radios I'm pretty sure for I talk they're toting, but I could be mistaken, there could be more, but I've spent like hours going in through this, and uh, you know, I haven't been able to find any other ones, so I find it hard to believe that there are more, but if there are, I do apologize, and if anybody makes a full video, then definitely go check the top comments in this video, then I will link the whoever makes a video with all of them for you guys to check out and hear all of them, because that's what's most important here, but regardless, these radios videos are mainly focused on Pablo and his role in the whole Great War thing. It's actually really interesting. I'm not going to spoil it too much, but also there's two radios from Harvey Yena from the Ascension Group, which are also very, very interesting that you guys should also come out and listen for. But anyways, I'm going to be quiet already. I'll let you guys enjoy the radios. But if you guys do go on to enjoy the video, then definitely do all the normal YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, bell, share, and all that great stuff. But I'm going to go. I'll catch you guys next stream video or whatever it may be. But later, guys. Day 521. I still don't know how it is possible, but late last year, I awoke from a watery grave. When I swam to the surface, I found the German military base abandoned. Only the undead remained on their shores. I attempted to flee, but, but the fog, it seemed no sooner that the shore faded behind me, it reappeared in front of me. Every attempt I made to escape, he, he led me right back here. As if I was meant to be here. I have begun broadcasting a radio signal. I'm hoping that someone will answer and come to my rescue. But if no one comes, I'm not sure how much longer I will survive this place. This Dugger, he tells me one more thing. He tells me he realizes that Dr. Monty is not inherently evil. Dr. Monty, he says, is trying to save the multiverse the safest way he knows how. By forcing us into this cycle, our story will never end. But also, his universe and his existence will be guaranteed. I can't blame him, he says. Dr. Monty is much like you and me. He just wants to survive. He doesn't want to risk his own annihilation. I tell him, well, if we are doomed to meet here again and again until the end of existence, perhaps there is something we can do to change that. He looks at me with a smile and says, I think you are right, old friend. In my dreams of this great war, I meet a German doctor. Oddly, he reminds me of the man who once tormented me, but his face is different. When I meet him, he is angry and frustrated. He mentions a man named Dr. Monty, saying he is to blame. This German doctor, he says he believed following Monty's plan would lead them to secure a better tomorrow. This was a lie, he says. This Dr. Monty, he sent the four to the Great War. It was at this moment the German doctor said he realized the truth. Coming to the Great War did not break the cycle. It was merely the end of their loop. <laughs> we will die here, he says. Then we will be reborn again. And when it is time, we will meet once more in northern France, continuing this never-ending loop. I wonder, he says, how many times have I been to the Great War? How many times have I perpetuated this endless cycle? <laughs> I'm tired, he says. I have been trying so very hard to do the right thing. But for all his efforts, he had only fulfilled the prophecy of this cycle. He and Dr. Monty had forged the endless loop. Day 3682, I think. Last night, I had a dream, a dream I have not had in many years. 
like the ones I used to have at the Eisentrache. I dreamed I was in medieval times, during a, a great war, a, a war to end all wars. In this dream, I am attacked by one of the great beasts. It holds me within its grasp, about to end my life, when I am saved, spared by a man in cloth, not a priest, someone more powerful. He wields a staff of fire. I see four heroes stand at top of a mound. The four raise their staffs in unison. And suddenly, the knights know the war is not lost. I rejoin the fight and fight alongside my king. For years, I had dreamed of this war. I wonder. Perhaps the Germans' experiments warped my brain, my sense of space and time. He thought I died, but it was only that my mind had transformed. I have been here ten years. No one has responded to my radio message. Is there no one out there? <laughs> am, I, am I even on Earth? Or am I caught somewhere in between? Every time I try to escape, my raft always brings me back. <laughs> this place is my, my prison. But is it a prison? Perhaps it is more like a, a waiting room, a, a purgatory of sorts. Perhaps my dreams are much more. Perhaps they are visions of what is to come. And perhaps it is here I must wait for what is to come. They will come for me. Day 4721. I think I understand. I know why I am here, why I am trapped on this, this rock, why I have these dreams, these visions, why I must get to this great war what purpose I am to serve in this cataclysmic event of the ages. I am not being sent just to witness what happened. But it is I who helps the doctor break his cycle. Near the end of the Great War, when all hope is nearly lost, I protect him while he activates a device, a, a, a teleportation mechanism. I hold back the undead as he powers it up. I give him the moment he needs to escape his fate. I ask him, where would you go? He says, there is a prison I must travel to. Hopefully, I can intercept our friends before it is too late. Before he goes, I give him the elemental gem from the Staff of Fire. I had seen it used to vanquish great evil. He once used it to save my life. Perhaps it will serve him well on his new path. This, <laughs> this is why I am here. It is no coincidence that I have also been left with the plans for the Agarthan device. That is how I get to the Great War. I need some help. But in my visions, I have seen that I will have help soon. For now, I must bide my time. For my time is coming. How are the experiments coming, Dr. Dean? Fascinating, Anton. Truly fascinating. The blood, it's not so much fluid as it is very much alive. It moves, it changes shape at will, reacts to our touch. Alive? How is this possible? I'm not sure. One theory is perhaps the creature itself was more of a vessel, and that its blood is made up of a million different organisms that control it, like a crew piloting a ship. The creature died, but the organisms inside survived, trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Is it sentient? Yeah, how is it able to move? 
The blood uses negative space, which exists between the molecules. This negative space provides an influx of energy, which we believe fuels the blood, giving it the ability to move. Do you still believe this blood is suitable for our primates? For rocket testing? Absolutely. The blood gives them rejuvenation abilities, making them more powerful, stronger. If a monkey is on the brink of death and given an injection, it makes a full recovery in a matter of minutes. The only trade-off is they become more angry, hostile, even violent in some cases. Is this a problem? It's manageable. But I'm confident monkeys given an injection of this blood will survive spaceflight. Wonderful news. I think we can move on to the next phase of the program. We should prepare a serum for mass production. Can you tell me more about this negative space? We really don't know much about it, except that it does not exist in this dimension. Maybe a gateway from another. One of our men has theorized it might even be a black hole of sorts. Send what research you've done to myself and our weapons team. Be sure Yuri's voice key is included in the brief. Of course, but I will remind you we need to be careful. We've noticed the blood has been changing composition, as if reacting to all our probing and prodding. Reacting? How so? I'm not sure how to explain it, but it feels like the blood's getting... angry. I trust your trip was success. Like you wouldn't believe, Anton. What we found down there. The creature was magnificent, gargantuan in size. It was otherworldly, a remnant of a different age. Oh, I wish you could have seen it. It was at the coordinates provided. Yes, 43 north, 180 east. The blood has a fluidity to it that I find fascinating. We would have investigated further, but we intercepted a transmission that the Americans were in the area. Somehow they'd been informed about the creature's location. Ah, these damn leaks. They will be our undoing. It seems every step we take, the Americans follow suit. Mark my words. There is a mole in Ascension, Harvey. We must strike it out before it destroys us. Get a team together. People we trust. If we are to study the blood, we must make sure the Americans do not find out. To study it? Anton, I think we should follow the plan and deliver the blood to the Siberian facility. Yet, Harvey. We cannot. This struggle with the Americans, we cannot let them get the advantage. This blood is our only leverage. After the war in Group 935 disbanded, you came to us. You came to me. You saw a better vision for the future here than what your America was offering. We created ascension on the principle of being better men, of making this world a better place. If this blood is key to unlocking the future, we would be fools to not take this opportunity. Perhaps you are right. At the very least, we can study it. What's the harm in that? 